Welcome back to the Brohio Podcast, a.k.a. The Cream Spot. I'm your co-host, the delicious Nickalicious. Hey, and I'm Rob Dog. What's going on, everybody? If you're a man with puffy nipples, turn this shit off right now. We don't want you listening to this fucking podcast. Yep. I don't know how many times we have to say that, but still, the puffy nipples are still surrounding us. And if you think you can beat me in a fight, just... I could rip the nipples off a gorilla if I wanted to, so just keep that in mind if you think you're hot shit. I've seen it. Rob Dog's my hype man. Yep, yep. <laughs> yep, that's all you got for me. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. We got a... You don't want to see me get breach ultimate hyper. No. It'll, it'll, it'll get bad. What? <laughs> okay, we have one new Patreon subscriber this week. Luke Lloyd. Luke Lloyd, as the only new Patreon subscriber this week, you get a virtual hand job. Oh, yes. Hit us up on Google Hangouts, brohiopodcast at gmail.com. That's not going to work because we won't have, ever have it turned on, so don't even try. <laughs> if you, if one thing we put out once before that we um, haven't put out again, if you play Clash Royale, <laughs> damn it, <laughs> Rob and I have a clan. It's called Clasher Nasher. That's Clasher space G N A S H E R. He is Brohio Rob. Yep, and I am Brohio Podcast. <laughs> I took the high road because <laughs> I beat him to it. <laughs> so come join us on there. Just say the guys from Brohio sent me, and you can play Clash Royale with us if we like you enough. That's all we do. We don't play anything else. No, I don't know what the fuck a discharge is or a <laughs> Discord a dis- discharge discharge. I don't know what discharge is. I don't know what that is. <laughs> a lot of these podcasts are like you can connect with us on dis uh, dis Twitter uh, Discord. And I said, no, I can't do that because I don't know what I'm doing. Still haven't downloaded TikTok. Still been wearing the same underwear since the coronavirus started. Oh, man. Since the COVID started. Yeah. I had a checkup today for my overall health, and it was very scary venturing out into public, specifically into a doctor's office, where I had no clue of what to expect, and I have realized... That, okay, first I want to say, I had nothing shoved in my ass this doctor visit. So your little snide uh-huh. jokes you people are going to put, you people are going to put on our... Well, at our p- age, I mean, you kind of look forward to that. <laughs> yeah. Although my our, my doctor is our football team doctor. Yeah, yeah. Fucking huge guy. Got He's got knuckles like pork knuckles. He's just, Brock Lesnar hands. Yeah. I have no interest in having any of those things shoved up my ass. No, no, not at all. Well, you might as well use one of them big rubber gut busters there at Hustler Hollywood. Hollywood. They stand up in the corner oh, man. and it comes up about your waist. Yeah, those things are terrifying. All right, so what we have going on in Ohio, I think the country is pretty much, unless you live in Wyoming or someplace like that, the country remains on a nationwide lockdown. Mm-hmm. They're slowly opening things back up here in Ohio. Yes, they are. And by slowly, I mean they're opening up distribution facilities, uh, some workplaces, the restaurants, the bars are still closed. The barber shops are still closed. Pretty much everything's still closed. Yeah, they they're making a slow plan to reopen everything. Rob, okay. And we haven't talked about because everyone's talking about the coronavirus, the corolla, the corolla virus, the Adam Corolla virus. And we haven't talked about it too much on this show. Uh huh. About what we believe or what we don't believe. Whenever our governor. Mike DeWine shut the city, shut the state down. It was just days before the Arnold Classic, which is one of the biggest public gatherings the state ever, the, the state has every year. You, know, you get a few hundred thousand people that come together for that, I mm-hmm. do believe. And at that time, I think we had about three confirmed cases of coronavirus in this state. And now, pro- progressing forward, I think. I have to look up my stats real quick before I throw it out there. I don't know what the uh, the numbers are for today. Confirmed 20,000 cases in Ohio. That's Whew. not nearly as many as they thought. At one point, the model showed we were going to be getting 20,000 new cases per day. We've had 20,000 total. Less than that, 19,335. So here's my thing. Since we first closed this motherfucker down, we have progressed nowhere in the cure for coronavirus. We've pro- we've progressed nowhere towards um, a vaccine, and we've progressed nowhere towards essentially an end to the coronavirus. You feel me? I feel you. They closed this p- 
complete this place down for uh, three confirmed cases. I appreciate his um, foresight in all this, and I, I, I respect what he's done as far as taking care of us. Here's the thing. I don't think there's a right or a wrong answer, but why are we opening this thing back up if we've made no progression towards a cure or an end or a vaccine? We shut it down with three confirmed cases, and we're opening it back up with 20,000 confirmed cases. Mm -hmm. I feel like if it's as bad as they thought it was going to be, this is the point that it would it would uh, get to the – this is where it would make it where they the worst case scenario was opening it up at this right. point. Right. And I don't understand I don't understand the Oh yeah, I absolutely agree. I mean, this is going <clears> to <throat> I mean, it was it was really bad before everything got shut down. And opening it back up is just going to like of course everything has stalled because we're oh, everything's yeah. on lockdown. I mean, I got carry out today. It was yeah. good. Tasted good. Ate it at home. Got a drink out of the fridge. I survived. It has put quite a damper on you know if i just want to get out with my wife for a little bit and just go fucking go to ikea or something like that i can't do that anymore i try to buy something from ikea this week and they're mm-hmm. they're shut down can't do it man really sad i did yeah. go to micro center and i bought a drone and it's probably the coolest <laughs> fucking thing i've ever done in my entire life this drone all the little neighborhood kids down the street were flipping it off today because they really <laughs> that's awesome there was, there was like a hundred boys on a trampoline in the backyard and I was flying the drone over, like, hopefully some of them start accidentally getting the swim trunks to fall off. And I'm hovering over there, and the one kid looks up, and he just starts flipping it off, and then they all started flipping it off. And I didn't have my SD card in it yet, and it won't record to my phone. So I went straight to Best Buy and got an SD card. Hell yeah. So hopefully I can get them to flip me off tomorrow. <laughs> or maybe their dad will come outside and shoot it. <laughs> yeah. That'd be such a bummer. Get your fucking ass out of here. I'd be so bummed. I've only had, I've, I've had two drones. Well, the kids have had two drones, so technically I get the, the dad tax, so I <laughs> okay. get to try it out yeah. first. Yeah. I fucking broke both of them. Oh, okay. They were cheap ones, so I mean, they don't have like the auto stability or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, this so. one's got all that, and you drive it, and you're like, holy shit, man, yeah. this thing is wild. I could barely get mine to fucking take off without <laughs> crashing it. I joined a group specific. what I bought was a Mavic Mini, and it's like, uh, they make really incredible drones. And I joined a, a group on Facebook, and it's just a bunch of Mavic Mini owners, and they all will post up their videos and stuff that they, they take. Really awesome videos. Mm-hmm. And this guy was on the side of a mountain. These people are from all over the world, but this I think this is an American-based one. I joined two of them. But he, uh, he pulls up on some hippies making vegetables on the side of a mountain, and the, one of the hippie dudes turns around, and he starts throwing rocks at the <laughs> 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 he falls over because he's not strong enough to pick the rocks up he's throwing. I'm just like, that's a pretty good sign to maybe eat some pork, some beef. you struggling to throw some rocks up at this little drone. I have a, uh, let me see here. Do I have an article this week? Yeah, I do. This comes by way of Australia. Another mystery poop jogger has surfaced in Sydney after human feces found in front of house. Okay. Okay. How does this keep happening? Why does it seem like Sydney is full of poo joggers? What the fuck is going on in <laughs> Sydney? <laughs> like, we get it. This is from uh, KI... KIIS1065 in Australia. That's probably some kind of fucking terrorist organization. <laughs> like, we get it. Everyone's out jogging more due to gyms being closed, but why is the foul part of the act happening? Just over half a year since Roxy... Jakenko's business in Paddington became the target of a mystery poo jogger. Another one appears to have surfaced in Marrickville in Sydney's inner west. The disgusting scandal has come to light after one resident put up a rather angry note accusing a mystery pooer of leaving human feces in their property in front of their garage. A picture of the note was then posted to Reddit. The note was put on a property on Silver Lane in Merrickville, warning the apparent poo jogger that they have installed security like a fence and a camera to catch them if they keep using the garage as their personal toilet. The note was quite polite, really, given the circumstances, but they did say that if it happened again, they would hand the evidence over to the proper authorities. Quote, Dear Mystery Human Pooer, the note began. <laughs> We have installed this fence and a camera to hand over to the police. We understand that COVID-19 is tough on everyone, but please stop shitting on our garage. (laughs) Oh, my God. 
Also, make sure you chew your food better. <laughs> whatever, whatever it is that makes it sticky, you got to get that checked. <laughs> oh, God. There's a toilet in the car park opposite Banana Joe's. Thank you for your cooperation. That sounds like a place you would hang out at, Rob Dog. <laughs> Banana is. Joe's. Oh, yeah. Hey, we're going to Banana Joe's. We're going to get a few drinks. <laughs> <laughs> I'd frequent it. Yeah. And, uh, it says, the resident then advised the person to possibly get a checkup with their doctor after observing the feces. Jesus. <laughs> I'm curious as to why people shit in public. Hold on. It went all the way to the top. Why would it do that? This is what happens. Oh, gotta love it. Bill Gates. <laughs> I'm curious to why people shit in public. Have they been caught short? Do they misjudge how their stomach felt before they left to go? Up? <laughs> I don't poop in the morning, man. I do. <clears throat> Every morning? Not every morning. Depends on what I eat the night before for dinner. <laughs> Tonight, yeah, I'm going to have a good one in the morning. You eat me out while you poop in the morning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll I'm probably sure. get the squirts. Yeah, I'm going to get sick <laughs> off that one, buddy. <laughs> the Nicolicious squirts. You ever had those before? Yeah, I've had them. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So here's my thing. I Like I said, I don't poop in the morning. I, my, my poops are pretty much restricted to mid midish day for me uh-huh but here's the thing as i don't drink coffee i don't need coffee my motor wake i wake up with my with a gas tank full is what happens to me and i'm just ready to i have a lot of gas i have gas issues for sure i don't man i just have shitting issues <laughs> i shit way too much for a normal person and then some people i know i'm not going to mention names women <laughs> they'll go days without pooping and that's fairly normal for them Man, I'd feel awful if I won a day. I have a feeling that my body would start to reject the poop. <laughs> they would just start throwing I'd up. start throwing up shit. <laughs> <laughs> they would definitely make a spot for me at the COVID hospital for that if I was. Yeah. And I looked it up one time. This is disgusting. I got the stomach flu really bad, and I was burping, and it tasted like sulfur. And it's part of the it's part of that gastro inter- whatever that yeah. that illness. Mm-hmm. And I googled it. I'm like, can you? like throw up diarrhea <laughs> it's fucking gross and i looked it up man you can that's the thing like people get so backed up they start puking up shit isn't that fucking gross oh it's like that episode of south park i don't remember that one <laughs> where randy marsh is sitting on the toilet and he has diarrhea and then he starts puking and he has to turn around and it's fucking great and Randy Marsh is by far the best character on South Park, and I will fight anybody that says otherwise. I haven't watched it in so long. God, it's so good still. I remember one time we or were- Or Butters. A- it's it's one of those two. Those those are the two best characters. Okay. I have been catching a little bit here and there recently. It's still, still right it's on still point. amazing. Yep. We were at a Frisch's Big Boy one time when I was about nine years old, and my little brother said, I got to go to the bathroom. And my mom and dad said, you take your brother to the bathroom? I'm like, okay. And he's a year younger than me. So I take him to the bathroom- and I'm standing outside the stall, and he's sitting on the toilet, and I just hear, like, <laughs> just straight, you know, fudge syrup just right. every, all over the place. I'm like, man. He's like, I don't feel good. My tummy hurts. And I'm like, oh, I'm in here doing this by my fucking self. <laughs> and then he starts puking at the same time that he's shitting. Oh, oh man. And I'm in the freshest bathroom by myself, nine or ten years old, just freaking out. And I finally I said, I got to leave this motherfucker. And I go back to the table <laughs> and the food, that's the best is when you go to the bathroom, bathroom or restaurant and you come back and the food's yes. on the table. That's the best. Yeah, it is. I come back and there's my little chicken, chicky tenders laying there on the table. And I'm like, dad, he's in there throwing up and puking at the same time. <laughs> and, uh, he's like, so what do you want me to do? Cause I think that's how people spontaneously combust. <laughs> it's like the cheat code to kill yourself. <laughs> My mom said, go in there and help him. <laughs> like, what the fuck you want me to do, yeah. mom? Yeah. So my dad gets up and he goes in there and I stay at the table. My mom's like, go with your dad in case he needs help. And I'm thinking, what the fuck am I going right. to do? I'm just some. So we go to the bathroom and my dad, he goes in there. And as soon as he opens the door, he goes, holy shit. <laughs> it just comes back out. <laughs> and I'm like, what? He's like, it's bad in there. It was bad. I said, what are we going to do? He said, I got an idea. And he walked to the front door of the Frisch's and he grabbed an auto trader, which is a really thick magazine of, uh, yeah. back in the day, you could get it at yeah. the front door. Sell cars. Big old, it's a thick magazine full of cars for sale. And he started ripping pages out of that bitch and he started laying them on the ground in the bathroom. I don't, he started laying it on the vomit. <laughs> like he's a fucking sick dog. <laughs> he has Parvo. That's what he's doing. <laughs> 
and my little brother's like, I just, oh, my, my belly hurts. My dad's like, hold on, we're going to cover up all this puke, and you're going to walk out of here just like it's a bridge, <laughs> a little paper bridge over the puke. <laughs> he got down on the toilet, he walked out, and uh, my little brother said, I'm not hungry. My dad said, I'm going to eat my big boy. I'm going to eat my burger, then we'll get out of here. But we got out of there, man, and that was a really scary time to be a nine. These kids these days, they think this lockdown is scary, but imagine being in a Frisch's bathroom by yourself with your little brother, and he starts shitting and puking at the same time. You don't know what to do. No. You don't no. know if he's in there getting fucked by a clown or if, what's going on. Yeah, that's, that's some scary shit right there. I remember one time whenever I was younger. Well, actually, I was probably about like 17, maybe. I was at the mall with, she's my girlfriend now, but my wife now. Um, and my brother was with me, and my brother was always a fucking hellraiser. Always. Yeah, yes, nothing's changed. No, nothing at all has changed. But he was probably... If I was 16, he was probably like 12 or 13, and he was always getting into shit. So I told him I had to go to the bathroom because I had to take a shit, and we were at like a department store or something. I never, I would never in a million years poop with them all. Oh, dude, my favorite thing to do was just, <clears throat> anytime we'd go out to eat, it would be go shit in their bathrooms. <laughs> Disgusting. I, <laughs> I had a thing where I was like, I want to shit everywhere I go. Uh, you're the start of this virus. I really am. But I was in there doing my business, and then all of a sudden, I hear the door open, and I'm like, okay, somebody's coming in here, so I kind of quiet myself a little bit. Dad? <laughs> And I, I hear my brother fucking start laughing, and I hear the sink running, and I'm like, "Oh God, what the fuck's he doing?" And I'm sitting there, and then all of a sudden I hear like smack, and I look, I feel water hit me, I'm like what the fuck? And then it happens again, and I look up, he's fucking wadding up wet paper towels and fucking chucking them at my wall where I'm at. <laughs> Dude, was, do you know? I was I, laughing so hard. I'm 32 years old, and I do that every day at work to people. <laughs> every you can ask anybody I work, I do it yeah. every day. It's my it's my mo. It's so fun, man. Oh, okay, so what you got this week? Oh yeah, coming yeah. at you. Let's explain a little bit. Where this is gonna this might be a little bit of a short episode. It's because we're gonna flip over at eight p.m. our time, Eastern Standard Time, and we're gonna join John and Brent from Hysteria, Hysteria Fifty One, and we're gonna be on their show, and it's gonna be in the, in the words of Donald J. Trump, it's gonna be huge. Uh, I've been talking to Brent about this for a few months. We're excited. We're going to be talking about Doom, the Doomsday Clock, which I purposely researched nothing at all. So we're just going to be flies or fat, nasty slugs on the wall. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And how I am every week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't mean, no, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> but what we're, normally you don't get back to back true crime stories from mm-hmm. us. Yeah. But last week, the guy got shot in the nuts. So why would we not cover that? And then I was flipping through Graveyard Shift, uh, Ranker so Graveyard good. Shift. So good. And I come across this story. I said, oh, man, this is perfect for a little nugget episode, a little small nugget abbreviated episode. Get in, get out, polish the knob, flip on over to Hysteria 51. Yeah, we still plan on hopefully doing a second episode this week. But if you want a third, potentially, check out Hysteria 51. I don't know when they're going to put yeah, it up. I don't know what that's what I was getting ready to say. We don't know when they're going to put it up. They yeah, might, we'll figure that out. They might be one of those polished operations where they edit it for weeks on end before they put it up i don't know uh, we'll find out tonight though us it's literally like two minutes after we get done recording it yeah, <laughs> yeah. so we are not sticking to the rotation we're giving you back-to-back true crime we've had a lot of fun stories on this show thanks to the internet we've uh, talked about it before with the coming of age of chat rooms when yes. we were younger, when we were, you know, fifth, sixth grade, mm-hmm. you could be anyone or do anything that you would like. I recall we got our first computer with the internet in my home around 1995 or 1996. Uh, <clears throat> we had AOL. Yep. It took two days to download <clears throat> a naked picture of Sable from WWF. Yep. Not proud of it. My dad caught it. Nipped at the butt. He got upset that I was downloading naked ladies on the internet before he even knew how to play solitaire. <laughs> He's still trying to figure out how to get naked ladies but on I the said, internet. I held up the disc. I said, Dad, I got this AOL disc for 250 free hours. Got myself out of it. Little did he know, had a whole stack of those motherfuckers in the closet. Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> Every day they would come in the mail. Those were the best. And like I said, you could be anyone you in chat rooms. Are, there's no really. There, there's still chat rooms, but nothing like chat rooms were then. Which I think, I think we kind of that's missed in this time. Just the meeting all these weird people that you could just you could fucking troll a hundred fucking people at the same time. Yeah, man, it it was definitely a different time for it's sure. Real weird if you think about, it, especially being kids and acting like you're like fucking twenty five. Well, that's the thing. I met this person. Um, 
Their AOL screen name was some variation of Big Daddy Cool. Okay. I don't remember. And I started to buff Bagwell. <laughs> it was a, it was this person said they were female that was sixteen. <laughs> and Daddy I, and I was what nineteen ninety five. I was like nine, nine ish. Yeah. So I would come home from school and I would chat with this Big Daddy Cool every fucking day after school, mm-hmm. and she was always on there. And it was like she was cool. She would talk about wrestling, and it wasn't like. Way the things are now, where you immediately go like, "Here, suck my fucking dick." You're just, right. you're just talking to someone that liked the same stuff as mm-hmm. you. And then there was never any like progression of a relationship. We just talk about this stuff. And then one day, I got home from school, and Big Daddy Cool was on, and I started talking to her. And she's like, "Man, I really liked Monday Night Raw last night." I'm like, yeah, it was awesome. You know, this is Man, this is it. Th- Attitude Era Raw. Well, this is this right. Is good Raw. This is right before Attitude. This was right right when Shawn Michaels and Diesel were kind oh, of okay. doing their thing. So still in Bret Hart's y- yeah. era. <clears throat> and I was a huge Bret Hart fan. Precursor to the Attitude Era. And I said, yeah. And um, then Big Daddy Cool, <laughs> just out of the blue, said, are there any rest stops or gas stations near your house? <laughs> Holy shit. Dude, I was in the fourth grade. And I said, <laughs> I was. I remember sitting there in the chair in the attic, and I was like, I'm going to get fucking murdered. I'm going to I'm gonna get fucking killed. And then I said, you know what, Big Daddy Cool? I don't think I should talk to you anymore. And I remember, I to this day, I am so proud of myself that at that age, right? I said, go fucking fist yourself. I don't know what you are or who you are. I just stopped talking to him. You couldn't block people back then. Yeah, all. yeah. There was, that was not an option. But I stopped talking to Big Daddy Cool after that because I started thinking about, I, will, I look like a little... I looked like a planter's can of nuts. I was a little fat round thing, and I just thought about if and you were ripe for the picking. I wasn't super cute. I was kind of chubby. Once I lost some weight, then I started. You know, I got a little bit of a jawline. People thought I was handsome. Before that, I was chunky and I had really spaced out teeth. <laughs> and I just thought about me being a rest stop, getting captured, and then just screaming for help. And then people like come running over, and be like, "Oh god!" And they see how fucking ugly I was. <laughs> like, oh, never mind. Go ahead and take him. <laughs> We're going to afford to get rid of that one. <laughs> Doing all of us a solid money. little fucking fudge circle. Take him with you. <laughs> I was so worried. Uh, fucking... No one would save me if I was getting fucking arrested. That's what I was worried. Looking like Heifer off Rocco. <laughs> yeah. It was worse than that. Hey, guys. Well, yeah. I was just so proud of myself that I put my foot down and said, internet safety. No, not meeting you at a gas station or rest stop. I had a really nice gas station by my house, but I wasn't in yeah. there. For the sake of this show, I'm glad you did that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. So we're talking about um, Sharon Rena Lapotka. Yeah. And I do believe that is Jewish for all the, all the <laughs> asking. So. I would think so. I'm going to pass it to you, Rob. All right, I'll take it. So we got Sharon Rena Lapotka was born on September 20th, 1961. One day before my birthday. And this, <laughs> this is all cited here from the uh, glorious... Wikipedia, our good old uh, treasure trove. I really had to do some digging on that one. <laughs> I don't know how you found this website. So Sharon Lepatko was the first of four daughters born to Orthodox Jewish parents, Mr. and Mrs. Abraham J. Denberg. They were members of the Beth... Ch- holy fuck. What is it? I lost it. It's T-F-I-L-O-H. <clears throat> I'm going to say Philo. Philo, Philo. Congregation. That's definitely Jewish. For sure. <laughs> That's, I don't know, probably A not. T and an F should never exist right beside each other. Yeah, this fucking shit. That's yeah. what you stand for. So Abraham being a canter at the synagogue, um, and raised in Baltimore, Maryland. She was a member of the volleyball and field hockey team, so that lets you know what kind of a girl she was. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean you don't want me to take my panties off? <laughs> <laughs> her junior and senior years, she was a nurse's aide, a library's aide. She had AIDS. I mean, she, she, she was a singer in the school's chorus. And this is in quotes here. She wasn't an outcast or anything of that nature, said Stephen Hyman. <laughs> what a cool last name. Unfortunate last name. Hey. Who attended the school with her. Hyman got in my face and I busted him. <laughs> Busted Hyman upside there. Pierced his face. Pierced his Hyman. Pierced Hyman. <laughs> yeah, she was about as normal as you can get graduating from Pikesville High School in 1979. Lepatka married Catholic construction worker Victor 
in Ellicott City, Maryland in 1991. It's right and, down the road from Epcot. Okay. <laughs> Makes sense. Okay. And migrated with him to a ranch-esque tract house in Hampstead, Maryland in the early 90s. I messed that up. I was supposed to say trap house. Oh, okay. Trap house. <laughs> Okay. The marriage was described by a classmate of Lopatka's as a way of breaking away, and her parents, of course, did not support it. Because they're, she, they're, she come from a very religious yeah, home. A very religious home. And a lot of people around town thought she was just doing it to get to her parents. They, what She wasn't necessarily marrying someone that she was in love with. Right. That she was mar- just marrying some schlub to get out of wherever this ma- city in Maryland. They didn't they didn't have any children, but like Rob said, I have no problems with women playing volleyball or field hockey, okay? I had a gym teacher in high school, God rest her soul. She <laughs> played field hockey. She tucked her nutsack into her socks before gym class. Very scary lady. She but the thing was very scary lady, very very drill sergeant ish. Yes, very. But I cracked her shell. And she was one of the sweetest ladies that I've ever oh, yeah. been around in my entire yeah, life. Definitely. She would go out of her way to make sure that I was doing what I was supposed to do. And she looked after me at school like I was a mother. Yeah, she was she, good people. She did have a very stiff upper lip, though. Oh, yeah. Just like some 41. She had a nice mullet, too. Very nice curly mullet. Yeah. That survived the, um, <clears throat> it lasted the test of time. Yeah. For sure. She resembled what you would think a female gym teacher would look like. Okay. So, there you go. When they moved to Hampstead, Maryland. Victor, her husband, became a familiar face in their little town. People would see him. They would see Victor walking around ta- walking around the dog. They had a dog, and he would walk around town, and he would go for jogs all the time. All right. But here's the thing about Sharon Lopatka. Okay, what's the thing? She looked the part of a... She was a big, burly bitch. Like, she had... <laughs> She looked like Ursula with a mullet from Ariel or from uh, the Little Mermaid. Yeah, she yeah. was. I hate to be this mean. She looked like she played field hockey. She looked like a rough, like a linebacker. She had big, thick fucking forearms, big, long man fingers and man hands. Oh yeah, just looked like the kind of person that would give treat you a really your, aggressive hand job, like a treat your wiener like the like the pin on a grenade, just rip it off yeah. and throw it. She was a hell yeah, no neck. Just shoulders connected to a head. She looked like the fucking juggernaut. That's what she looked like. She's probably into, like, dick stomping. Speaking of dick stomping, I want to hop over to a review we got this past week. <laughs> okay. It's this, I like these I like these random tangents. This is, from Va- this is from Vanessa Payne. She even gave her name. She gave us a one star. She said, I don't even know. Then she said, you guys are disgusting and stupid. My husband <laughs> loves you. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a special shout out to... That's all it is? Yeah, that's all it says. You guys are disgusting and stupid. My husband loves you. Vanessa Payne, one star. <laughs> Thank you very much, Vanessa Payne. That's Thank great. You, Vanessa. At least, <laughs> at least your husband likes us. Like I this. love your husband. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> the best part that's is... That's awesome. We can't even talk to them because they're from Canada and the border shut down right now. So oh, man. It's rough. talk to them. Yeah. So let's we're setting the stage a little bit here. She's a big fucking rough and tumbler, you know, probably three, three fifty, I don't know. Just pure meat. Yeah. And their husband, he's out, you know, jogging, taking walks, and the people around the people around town would see him going for his jogs and they would call it jogs for hogs because they knew that he would have to work out in order to put that tank up on his back. <laughs> <laughs> Jogs for hogs. <laughs> he is going like squat like five foot five fifty. <laughs> I don't wonder he's not jogging. You see the size of his wife? She looks like a fucking Volkswagen. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You see the forearms of that bitch? I mean she looked like Brian Earl Acker. She was big. Dude, that's fucking awesome. Good for her. And like we talked about earlier, <coughs> this insane. what the story happened about the time the internet chat rooms and AOL, all that stuff was starting to make its giant leaps into our lives. Hell yeah. There was a lot of a lot of new stuff, and I remember even friends' moms around that time, and the the way they would um, I had some friends' moms, they would never get off AOL. They mm-hmm. would just fall in love with these people they would chat with, and just all they would fucking do. But you know, I would go to my friends' houses. We could do whatever. The, we could s- smoke crystal fucking meth in the bathroom, and then nothing would happen because the parents wouldn't pay attention to us. Right. Charlie got me to drink <clears throat> motor oil one time. <laughs> <laughs> He put Cheerios in it. 
and Pepto Bismol. Oh man, you think this one will make you sick? I said, I don't know. Let's fucking try it, dude. And it didn't work out. It got me a little bit sick. I didn't die. <laughs> you think? But it definitely made my mouth numb, and it was really bitter. So, <laughs> but his mom, nice and thick. His mom was on the computer. She wasn't paying attention to us. I love to tell about it, though. We got a friend who we've talked about before who was a uh, who's. <laughs> His dad, every time I would go over his house, he would just, and they had like a, the, their computer was literally right in their living room. Yes. So right through their entrance and there was, there'd be a desk over to the left of the door and his dad would constantly be sitting at that computer <laughs> looking at porn. Oh yeah. And he would always, he'd, he'd fall asleep at the computer looking at porn. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> you walk out for a drink in the middle of the night and he's sitting there with his dick in his hand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that happened to me once. <laughs> I said, Jesus, man. And like his wife would just be like walking around just like it's a fucking normal thing, man. Yeah. I mean, not that it's like anything you should be ashamed of, but I mean, the, th- no, the, the, the fact that I was like fucking weird. 15 and seeing this, I was like, dude, this is fucking dope. Like, <laughs> your parents rule, man. <laughs> your dad just sits there and just fucking watches porn all day. All right, I'm going to go beat my meat for a little bit. <laughs> don't bother me if you don't mind. But yeah, the t- the computer was right in the middle of the living yeah, room. Yeah, there's no hiding it. There's no hiding that little hairy dick. <laughs> All right, so Rob, tell them about... Uh, Let's get into the business. Her, tell her about Sharon's business. Sharon's ventures. business, all right. Uh, besides Big Bush, um, Sharon began several small internet business ventures from her home to make some extra money. And this, we're not talking about pyramid scheme stuff here. <laughs> or, or, <laughs> kind are, of, yeah. or are we? <laughs> so in her business, this is in quotes here, classified concepts, she rewrote ad copies for advertisers for $50 per ad. So she also operated several other websites where she sold psychic readings and home decorating secrets. <laughs> Only she knew. So on the site, Sharon would also post ads selling other services with a one nine hundred number for which she would receive a percentage of the revenue. Well, the one nine hundred numbers were great when we were kids because you could get on a payphone oh, and yeah. you could call a one nine hundred number and you could get up to the point where you had to pay money. So you. I would gather all of my friends around, and I would call from a payphone, and then I would put it up, and then the chick, the lady on the other line would be like, are you looking to get your dick sucked tonight? And all my friends like, oh my god, dude. <laughs> yeah, for those of you that don't know, do that? the 1-900 numbers were uh, pay by the minute phone sex. Yeah, or we would call the Jerry Springer line as well. Yeah, oh yeah. We did a lot of that. Yeah, that's awesome. So um, another way she made money was by advertising pornographic videos. <laughs> I was digging that. Yeah. So Sharon Lapaca made a new friend. Her name is Diane Safar, who lived nearby, and the two of them put together a 30-page booklet last, well, this was last year, on home decorating and country crafts. It was called Dion's Secret of Home Decorating Guide. Oh, I need to get my hands on that. <laughs> and another, another part in quotes here says... Here we were decorating our houses one day and talking to each other for advice, and we just say, hey, we should put this stuff in a book, Safar said. That's how we made this podcast. <laughs> exactly. Like, Dude, I got touched by something last night. <laughs> Let's talk about it. Let's make a show about it. <laughs> we put it together, and then we went around to the ladies' groups and churches selling it. It was fun. <laughs> what I want people to know is, is the women I knew was not crazy in the slightest, Safar said of her friend. She was always a happy person. Always bubbly, even. So what we got here, she's not, just because she's big and burly and she could rip her California Redwood straight out of the fucking ground if she wanted to. Good beer? That is a fucking delicious beer. What is it? Tell them what it is. This is by a local beer brewery called Branch and Bone. It's called Dream Wax. That's an oat cream IPA. I got some dream cream for you, buddy. It tastes, tastes like an orange dream sickle. Oh, wow. That's Man, good. that's fucking fabulous. <clears throat> she would... um. So she's got this rough exterior. She's got this head that merges directly with her shoulders. She's f- yoked. She's jacked. Okay. She's got this big, broad chest. But everyone that knows her says she's not weird in the slit in the slightest way. She's not. Um, she didn't have anything alarming about her past or about her that would lead them to believe that she was into some of the stuff that she was in. About five to six years into this marriage between Victor and Sharon. Oh, excuse me, man. I'm fucking. I'm a mess over here. No, that's fine. Too much beer, man. I respect you. It's okay. Something started to sour. She wasn't getting her. She wasn't getting her needs fulfilled. Let's Uh-oh. just say that. Oh, oh. And one attraction to these internet fantasies, you can 
like we said before, you can be anyone you want to be. Yes. It's, and I don't know why I put it in my research right here. This is handwritten. I said, it's super fun and fantastic. <laughs> It's super fun and fantastic. You can just make up your own identity and just fuck people out of... My main thing, like, I really didn't do much into, like, pretending like I was somebody I wasn't. My main thing is, like, even in person, like, people that I met in real life, I would always tell them for some reason I was a year older than what I was. I'm 25. <laughs> like, I was, like, 14. I'm, like, I'm 15. Like, it's so much fucking better. I could have said I was, like, 18. I didn't even have a fucking pube You're then. in the lunch line in elementary school. You're not 25. <laughs> You have really hairy thighs, though. If you were like wore some really yeah. short shorts, you could probably pass yourself off as twenty five when you're say thirteen or fourteen. I probably could have, yeah, yeah. Until they saw your wiener, and they're like, oh, <laughs> you're a, three. He's just a baby. <laughs> Where is it? How do you pull it back so tight? <laughs> oh man. So and it would be unfair for us to say that she, when I said she wasn't getting what she needed at home, we don't know the answer to that for sure. Mm-hmm. Why does anyone go on the internet and pretend to be someone they're not? For instance, it's all I guess it's all for the thrill for some people. Yeah, but, then, but, I mean. but then some people they literally go on and do this whole identity parade because they aren't getting the the love and the attention that they need at home. So they go online to seek the attention that they want. Just yeah. like all these people that make TikTok videos. <laughs> All those people just want attention. No. And she had the internet businesses set up, and that started to clash with her internet fantasies. So she started okay. to sell, she was selling the, the home decoration stuff and rewriting ads for psychics and all this weird shit. But then she started to sell weird, sexually driven stuff. Yes. In one of her ads, she says, I am 25. I have blonde hair. Um, I'm sorry. I'm going to read this in her voice, what she sounds like. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm 25. <laughs> like Cartman. <laughs> I have blonde hair. <coughs> uh, green eyes. I'm Large Marge, five man. 5 foot 6, and I weigh about 121 pounds. Is anyone out there interested in buying my worn panties or pantyhose? <laughs> if you call right now, I can get you one of these pairs with some extra cooter gravy. <laughs> Oh, first off, first off, I get that this is like the fucking 90s, but there is nothing uh, sexy about pantyhose. <laughs> what's less? Have you you want to see my tan that I can pull off my legs? <laughs> it's like a fucking snake skin. One of the most dramatic things I've ever seen is a video I clicked on and he fucked. It was someone shitting herself in pantyhose. <laughs> It's like cheesecloth. Oh my god! You ever seen that shit? When's oh. the last time you had a real good bite of cooter gravy, Rob <laughs> Dog? <laughs> but it's cooter gravy. Why did know. I do that? Why did I do that? <laughs> okay, let's finish reading this app. Is anyone interested in buying my worn panties or pantyhose? This is not a joke or a wacky internet scam. I'm very serious about this. If you are serious too, you can email me. Well, I also want to say here that. Get your this, big panty load of <laughs> cooter gravy. This woman is a trendsetter, first off. Because think about it now. Oh. You can make a fucking living yeah. off of doing the same exact thing. You and I could do this. We could <laughs> shit in our pants and sell them. There's people in China who buy that stuff. <laughs> Anybody wants to buy my pantyhose, send us an email. Podcast at gmail.com. I'm really fat, okay, and I got blonde hair. But when I walk around Chinese people, they think I'm Hulk Hogan. <laughs> it's because they don't know. They're just not used to seeing right. a bronzy, blonde-haired, blue-eyed man. like, And they just assume that I'm some type of Greek god yeah. in Thunder Lips or something. I don't know. <laughs> And I said, no, buddy, I'm just a fat guy from Ohio with a diaper full of cooter gravy. <laughs> you got me all wrong, cowboy. Now, other messages appealed to the, uh, there was, there's other messages that she made kind of like this ad, but it says that she's 25, five foot six, 121 pounds. It, okay. In all actuality, I think she was five foot one, 230 pounds is what I do believe in my research. Damn. So she was shaped like a good sized butt plug. She was like a snow pl- or a, a, a snow cone. I'm not throwing any shade at it because I've been five foot one, two thirty. It's hard. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's to each. I'm trying to body shame, but whew, that's a I'm, big difference. I'm not. I'm not body. But she's lying about her body. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what I'm saying. If you're five yeah. foot one, two thirty, get down with a girl. Fuck yeah. Fucking pick it up. Put that it out there. Thick. She's thick. She's like a cold cup of oatmeal. <laughs> 
cold cup. <laughs> to be cold, cold and lumpy. That's thick, bro. It's like fucking a quarter, uh, a quarter of the recommended water amount or whatever the fuck you put in it. It's just a big old cardboard container of Quaker oats. <laughs> Of cooter, <laughs> like a bag of cottage cheese. Cooter gravy. <laughs> cooter gravy. That's fucking horrible. If you want to buy a pair of my patties with a good old line of s- snail slime, <laughs> <laughs> don't make me waste this beer. Oh, man. <laughs> other, she started to do other messages, selling the shit. Hell yeah. With uh, <clears throat> she was trying to reach the foot fetish audience, and to uh, <laughs> she was also. Realized that there was a, a market for men that were into watching women pass out. Okay. <laughs> Which is not creepy at all. All right. And would they f- get stuff done to them when they were passed out? Or they just, <laughs> is it just the passing out? Um. Well, that's where it kind of... She said she had videos of the stuff, but I don't think she ever delivered on it. So. It's just like us in school choking each other out? <laughs> yeah, just like... Okay. It. Okay. She was five foot ten, one one eighty nine. That's a... That's that's big. That's fucking. If I saw her at a bar, I wouldn't fuck with her. I'd be like that person could kick my ass. And that's taller than me. Yeah, I that's, mean that's a big. That's a that's a good size frame. Yeah, yeah. for us uh, for a lady. Yeah. In fact, um, on August first, she posted another ad. It said, "Hi, my name is Nancy." <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, I'm reading your voice, dude. <laughs> sorry. Hi, my name is Nancy. I just made a VHS video of actual women willing and unwilling to be knocked out, drugged, under hypnosis, Holy and shit. chloroformed. Wow. Never before has a film like this been made that shows the real beauty of the sleeping victim. <laughs> Hi, I'm Nancy. This is a snuff film. Yeah, and then she says she has this. She's trying to sell it on the internet. Let's go to August 2nd. Okay. This is another ad. It says... Do you dare enter the <laughs> land of the giantess? Good. Where men are crushed like bugs. Fucking told you she was into crushing. I by, told you. By these angry yet gorgeous giant goddesses. <laughs> it makes me think of the, there's this episode of, uh, you don't watch Futurama, do you? I don't watch any TV at all. Okay. Well, there's there's this episode of joke. Futurama where they go to this land of, of giantesses <laughs> and... <laughs> Their, their thing is like they get sentenced to death by snoo snoo so it's death by fucking so they have to fuck until they die and they're, they're behind they're like chained up against the walls and they're like they go from a, they go from like really happy to like ah! and really happy to, ah! it's, like, it's like good and bad and good and bad I don't know about this crushing stuff, dude. You'd have a hard no, time man. finding a big enough lady to take me down. I know that. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not. I'm not about that. There's people that like to get their dick stepped on with high heels and stuff. Oof. Yeah. I'm... <laughs> oh, man. Do you dare enter the land of giantess, where men are crushed like bugs? God, I bet she stunk. <laughs> yeah. I bet she smelled like a fucking turtle aquarium. There's no doubt. Oh in my God, mind. It's so bad. <laughs> And then the next ad on uh, October, this is also from October 1st, it says, let me customize your most exciting bondage fantasy for you on VHS to watch and enjoy privately in the comfort of your own home. Prices start at only $100. Let it be said, though, that there was never any evidence to suggest that she made any of these videos that Aww, she was ma'am. trying to sell. But she she might have. I just when I thought I knew what my next Google search was going to be. Do you dare <laughs> enter the land of cooter gravy? Oh God, <laughs> she's she's one of those women that when you're done making love to her, she pulls out a pack of camels out of the nightstand. She gives her vagina a cigarette. She shakes her dick off and turns over. Her vagina smokes Paul Malls. <laughs> <laughs> the camels are for me. The palm malls are for her. It dips. <laughs> it dips. <laughs> it fucking spits it out. Oh, you take her pants <laughs> off and it's got a dip in it. It's got some skull. <laughs> Put the britches back on and get the fuck out of there. <laughs> You're probably in Ohio if that happens, though. You're right? Them fucking lips are dipping. <laughs> That's my dad was like, first time I had sex to your mom, she had a dip in. <laughs> she had a dip in her pussy. <laughs> oh, man. I'm going to I kicked her right in her front butt. 
All right. <laughs> Let's keep going here. <laughs> so she often ventured into hardcore pornography. Our pornographic chat rooms, mm. these are the best ones, where subscribers would openly discuss their interests in necrophilia, which is fucking dead bodies, if you don't know. Oh, sure. Bondage. I'm really into that. Fetishes and sadomasochism. Uh, she used numerous pseudonyms and multiple personae. Personas. Okay, there you go. There you go. Yeah. Whatever. It's okay. It's it's stupid. Uh, personas in her internet messaging. Uh, using these masks allowed her uh, not, I fucking can never say this word, anonymity. anonymity. You got it, buddy. I'm, I'm working, man. And uh, freedom to pursue her unusual fantasies. So according to the Washington Post on November 3rd, 1996, one message Sharon posted stated that she had a fascination with tutoring, or torturing, tutoring, tutoring. <laughs> I would like to tutor your children. I tutor. A fascination with torturing till death. That's that's not that's not good. Uh, Some of the identities she assumed during the chat room sessions included a three hundred pound strict <laughs> dominatrix and disciplinarian, a screen actress named Nancy Carlson. That's a, that's a good actress name. Hi, I'm Nancy. <laughs> who would offer to star in customized sex videos for a price and a shapely five foot six beauty? She was found to use sites like. Fetishfeet.com and sexbondage.com. Double market. <laughs> you don't bookmark both of those here. So, but the very odd undertone to all of these internet chat rooms and message boards she was using, she wanted to be tortured and killed as part of her sexual fantasies. Don't we all? Oh, Isn't that all what we want? Well, that's that's where we're getting. We're getting here. When, so we've heard the story of consensual cannibalism I yes believe. yes we have yes i don't think we've done that episode on here no no we've no talked about it a little bit but now we're getting into the um the area of consensual i guess consensual murder mm -hmm. which is kind of weird uh, often she would post messages on the internet looking for a man to satisfy her wish a sex rights activist named tanith <laughs> okay sounds like a <laughs> okay <laughs> His name was Tanith, who would often visit the sites, told the Washington Post that she became concerned with... Okay, this is a female, Tanith is. She became sure. concerned with Sharon's bizarre messages. On November 3rd, 1996, the Post quoted Tanith saying that Sharon was, quote, going to chat rooms and asking to be tortured to death. Hmm. Tanith had tried to stop her, but Sharon refused. Sharon replied to the women, to the woman, quote, I want the real thing. I did not ask for your preaching to me. Oh, wow. She doesn't want to be fucked with, man. She just wants to get it fucking she done. She wants to be murdered, is what all this alludes to, which is very, a very strange sexual fantasy. So here's a question. If she wanted to be murdered in a sexual act, do you think she would get off? She'd get off this fucking earth. Well, she that's, get that's true. <laughs> <laughs> While dying, she just lays one pile of gravy. One last <laughs> pile of gravy. One more shot of cooter gravy. <laughs> Get your biscuits ready, boy. What's cooter gravy sound like when it comes out? <laughs> it has to sound like that. <laughs> it's chunkier than uh, that, though. Oh, god damn it! <laughs> we had a few people write us and said they about turned us off last week because we were talking about boogers. Really? Uh, yeah, that's I, all it takes. I told people people don't like boogers. They don't mind like shits and farts and vaginas and stuff, but boogers freak people the fuck out. Boogers are easy, man. You can pick and flick them. You can eat them and make them go away right in front of you. <laughs> you can recycle. <laughs> you fucking recycle your boogers. Ooh, this one's good. I'm bringing... <laughs> You're coming back in a little bit. Extra juicy. So Sharon wanted... She wanted to be murdered in the act of sexual passion. Okay. And it was learned that there were dozens of replies to her requests to be tortured and murdered and killed. Okay, okay. Obviously, it's a fucked up world, and it... It's only progressed more than that since Sharon made her rounds back in the uh, mid-90s. Oh, yeah. But once these guys that were chatting with her realized that, yeah, she's fucking serious, they would immediately squash the conversations and quit talking to her because they realized, <laughs> I'm going to go to prison for killing someone. Yeah. Except there was one guy there's always one tell him about the one guy i'll tell him about the one guy uh hi you fucking asshole you stole my name robert bobby frederick glass it's always us roberts man yeah i know <laughs> we're the fucking problem he was a 45 year old computer and 
analyst. Analyst. Analyst, yeah, he's fucking analed those computers. <laughs> who worked for the Catawba County, North Carolina government. He was a, a government boy. He was a government computer guy. According to the Washington Post, Bobby was a productive worker who was responsible for programming tax rolls and kept track of the gas consumption of county vehicles. What a stimulating job. <laughs> Very fucking boring. He worked for Catawba County for almost 16 years. So Bobby was also a computer enthusiast, according to Sherry, his wife of 14 years. Oh, so Bobby was married. He was married for 14 okay. years, man. All right. But in an interview with the Washington Post, she lamented that he had more passion for his hard drive oh, yeah, than his marriage, and that hard drive was extra hard. And that's buddy. like what I said, man, whenever the, the coming of age of this shit, there are a lot of marriages ruined because of the internet, because of chat rooms and shit. I mean, yeah, you got to think there's literally never mm. been anything like it before. There was no way for you to connect, I guess, a phone. To, it was so easy. To connect with... Maybe an old flame or just someone that had way more in common with you than your husband or wife did. Yeah, or somebody that you thought. <laughs> yeah. you Big know? Daddy Cool. Big Daddy Cool. You exactly. got any gas stations or rest stops so I can pick your fat, chunky ass up? <laughs> so Sherry Glass stated in an interview that her husband had lost his attraction for her. Okay. Sherry said that the final straw was when her children asked why their father didn't love her any longer. So it's getting to the point where, you know, even kids who are borderline idiots can even understand that something fucking <laughs> <Yeah>. is going on. <laughs> this so, guy's are from North Carolina doesn't make him idiots, bro. <laughs> that just makes him inbred. Uh, that, that's true. Okay. So in May of 1996, Bobby and Sherry separated, and shortly thereafter, Sherry moved from the family home with their three children, daughters aged 10, 7, and son 6. Now, according to Sherry Glass, there were other marital problems that few had known about, Daily, Bobby had spent countless hours typing on his computer. Just fucking typing. That's all he did. He just practiced typing. <laughs> and Sherry, of course, became suspicious. Shut the fuck up and do a word count test. <laughs> right. Do a typing test, you stupid bitch. So one day she logged on and found some worrisome emails saved on the hard disk. The messages she told Washington Post, which had been posted under the pseudonyms, Toyman and slow hand. You gotta pronounce that first one, Toy Man. Toy Man. Toy Man. Not Toy Man. I kind of like. I kind of. Uh, you fucking church it up grazed, a little bit. I, I grazed over that a little bit. Hey, I'm Charles Toyman. How are you? Toy, <laughs> toy Man. It's all one word. Say, hey, Toy Man. I'm, I'm being. I'm being generous for yeah. him. So the, under the pseudonyms Toy Man and Slow Hand, that's just so sexy, alarmed her because of their raw, violent, and disturbing nature. Oh, yeah. So after dinner one evening, she confronted her husband. Sherry later said that all of the color drained out of his face. She realized there was this side to him that was unknown to her. Despite this alarming discovery, Sherry recalled him as... Generally pleasant. <laughs> That's like a fucking... Okay. What is the worst possible... Like, if you split up your spouse mm -hmm. and then someone asks them a year down the later, explain Rob, and she says, no, he's a piece of fucking shit. That is not nearly as bad as her saying, oh, he was generally pleasant. <laughs> it's so insulting. <laughs> to, he was generally pleasant when he wasn't... Type on that goddamn keyboard. <laughs> he liked when you called him slow hand. <laughs> toy man. <laughs> toy man. I never knew who was coming to bed, whether it was Bobby, <laughs> Toy Man, or Slow Hand. <laughs> he put Hot Wheels in my asshole. That's why I talked to my uh I talked to my penis. I'm like, you want Toy Man or you want Slow Hand? What do you want tonight? Slow hand. Now, oh, Bobby, as you can imagine, he lived in a trailer in North Carolina. <laughs> the thing about North Carolina is everybody that lives there lives in a trailer. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, and I saw a picture of Bobby, and I liken the shape of him to that of a, a hefty trash bag full, filled full of mashed potatoes and dog shit. <laughs> That's what Bobby looked like. So Bobby and Sharon were essentially a match made in heaven. They both, you know, he was, she was big and just could probably flip his fucking trailer over if she wanted to. And he was fat and probably so fat to the point that he was nearly disabled. So she could just pick him up and carry him around <laughs> like a monkey. Just carry him around like a chimpanzee. <laughs> He'd eat all of her painted gravy. <laughs> I uh, heard you were uh, talking a shit in there. Did you save it for me or what? <laughs> Did you took a big old nasty poopy in there? <laughs> you big, big, 
<laughs> you big bitch. <laughs> he just had fucking doggy bags by the bathroom. <laughs> you fill up this bag, I'm going to eat it. Because I'm, I'm the toy man. I'm going to eat your poopy. <laughs> They're childish. Those of you listening to the show, I want you to go to your spouse tonight and just say, I'm going to eat your poopy. And let me know how it works out for you. Please. Say, I'm going to eat your poopy. Send us an email, brohiopodcast at gmail.com. In August of 1996, Bobby and Sharon became acquainted while visiting the various sexually oriented internet chat rooms. Hell yeah. Bobby displayed a fetish for inflicting pain. Okay. Whereas Sharon exhibited a desire to be tortured. Okay. In an email message to Bobby, Sharon asked him to fulfill her fantasy. Match made in heaven. She wrote to Bobby that she wanted to be bound and strangled as she approached an orgasm. Okay. Never had one of those before. (laughs) And... The choking thing has come a long way since then. Everybody wants to be choked. Oh, yeah, yeah. Me, not so much. Not looking to be choked because if I fall down, I'm going to make a fucking mess. If I bleed, it's just not I don't want to be choked, okay? Yeah, Uh, I'm not into pain. Bobby responded to her messages by describing in depth how he would fulfill her wish. What a giving man. Email correspondence between the two lasted for several months. An investigator of the Lopatka case... Captain Danny Barlow of North Carolina's Caldwell County Sheriff's Department <laughs> said if you put all their messages together, you'd have a very large novel. Police, Hell yeah. Police were able to recover almost 900 oh pages. God. Ain't nobody Ooh. worth 900 motherfucking pages. Hell no. From Sharon and Bobby's computers. On the morning of October 13, 1996, Lopatka informed her husband she was going to Georgia to meet acquaintances. Oh, so she was taking her big burly ass some <laughs> <laughs> leaving. She was getting drafted. If you think you're going to fucking stop me, put the gloves on, let's fight. <laughs> she was going to go do her combine. Uh, she also left him a note that sh- uh, she would not be returning home and requested not to track down glass. Uh, the note also read that if my body is never retrieved, don't worry, know that I'm at peace. And this is, she's leaving the house to go meet this guy. And she's le- she's saying in the note, if my... It- if my body is never retrieved, don't worry. I'm at peace. She has intentions. Like, her, it's her thing. Yeah, she's not planning on coming back. She wants to be fucking killed. Yeah. She wants to be fucked and killed. I feel like that's the ultimate, just saying, all right, I'm... I'm you know what? But, I don't know if that orgasm's worth it. <laughs> it's not, but people that know her said she wasn't suicidal. She wasn't crazy. She was very run-of-the-mill and normal person. This is not normal shit. Right. Maybe it just stems from the fact that she's just always been so big and powerful that she just wanted to be overpowered. <laughs> Fucking let a girl yeah. get overpowered every once in a while. I, and you look at her her track record here. Mm-hmm. The 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 psychic shit. The the, the sorry, a little hiccup there. That was all right, man. That's fine. Right. The dirty panties. The the <laughs> fetish videos. Okay. All this stuff that was kind of make believe. She was kind of like sh- maybe. She'd make so much money nowadays. We, speaking of the internet now, yeah, like you can get fucking killed on the internet now. Oh, it, yeah, yeah. Back then, it wasn't like that yet. Even though I was trying, people trying to pick me up at truck stops. <laughs> that's because my ass looks like a little cup of water. It's nice. You understand <laughs> right, right. what I'm saying? Yeah, I get you. It wasn't like that. So maybe she was kind of locked into this fantasy mode where you know maybe she did want to go to the brink. She wanted someone to take her to the edge, just fucking rough her up because her entire life she's been built like a Chicago Bears middle linebacker. Right. She just wants someone. To rough her up and take her to the edge and give her the climax. That she just wants to had. find her O.J. Simpson. But this guy, uh, old Ponytail here in North Carolina. <laughs> oh, he's got Ponytail, too. That's ponytail so good. Bobby. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> he looks like, you know exactly what this guy looks like? He looks like the... the like Don Vito? The South Park <laughs> meme of the guy on the computer with the, yeah, with the yeah, wrist Numa brace. Numa man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what he looks like. <laughs> I was thinking of Don Vito, Bam Margera's uncle. They got fucking very, arrested for rape. Very, very close, okay. but he looks like the arm brace guy. From okay, South Park. that works too. So the same morning, Lopatka drove a blue colored Honda Civic to Baltimore, Pennsylvania station, uh, which was 45 minutes away from her home and arrived on the Amtrak in Charlotte, North Carolina by 8.45 p.m. That tells you how important this dick was that she Amtrak. fucking went on a train ride. She took a train ride to get to get this. It wasn't, you know, your typical... Run of the mill love. Yeah, she had to go on a. She had to get that train. Yeah, trying to get that train ran. Yeah. On. Uh... Okay, and you could probably guess who was waiting on her 
when the train ride was over. It was it was Bobby Glass, or okay. as I like to call him, Bobby Ass. <laughs> uh, Bobby drove with Lapodka, Sharon, in yep. his pickup truck to his Lenore, North Carolina-based mobile home. Which, yeah, buddy. The nice thing about a trailer is if you decide, say, fuck it, I don't want to live here anymore, you yeah. can hook that bitch up to a trailer a trailer hitch, yep. and you can drag your mobile home anywhere you want to go. Just people, get the fuck out. People call trailers trashy. I say you're giving yourself options. Exactly. So you people, I can't do that with my house. Uh, you people from North Carolina should be proud. <laughs> uh, his mobile home was located 80 miles from their first meeting place in Charlotte. On October 30th, 1996, South Coast Today reported that after the, uh, the police department's newly developed computer crime unit found substantial evidence in Sharon's computer linking her to Bobby Glass. Police in North Carolina monitored Bobby's trailer for several days. <laughs> when the trailer's rocking, don't come a-knocking, because we're sp- <laughs> spraying cooter gravy. It was hoped that Sharon would be found alive at his red- residence, but she was not seen during the stakeout at all. So she was there for three days at this point, if I am not mistaken by all my dates here. They were doing the stakeout, and the investigation led them to Bobby Glass's trailer. And she was there for about three days. On October 25th, Judge Beal issued a police search warrant for Bobby's trailer. Investigators arrived at Bobby's home while he was at work. The property surrounding the turquoise trailer was littered with rotten garbage and abandoned toys. <laughs> it's fucking turquoise. Like that's like that's amazing. You wanna know why there's so many fucking toys in my yard? That's because I'm the fucking toy man. <laughs> hey, there you go. I got snail trail panties in here. <laughs> we got Big Mac contarden cartons and containers. <sighs> Landlord told me if I flushed kitty litter down the toilet one more fucking time. <laughs> I mean, who has who hasn't gotten in trouble for that? <laughs> I use kid litter because this bitch I picked up from the train tracks like the shit in a box. She's big too, five foot ten, two hundred twenty. Bobby don't play no games. The interior of the trailer was equally dirty and cluttered. Of course, S- still they found items belonging to Sharon, as well as drug and bondage paraphernalia. Child pornography. Oh, that's not good. A pistol and thousands of computer disks. Probably on fucking AOL free <laughs> yeah, 250 exactly. hours. <laughs> 75 feet from the trailer, an officer discovered a fresh mound of soil, and it wasn't dog shit. After digging wow. only two and a half feet beneath Damn. the mound, they found Sharon's decomposing big body. <laughs> <laughs> You got to dig farther than two and a half yeah. feet if you want to cover up that body. Oh, man. Should we get it out? Should we just bury it? <laughs> Leave it. <laughs> it's like one of those <laughs> on the, the beach and they just blow the whales up. Yeah, you know? exactly. <laughs> Dynamite. Oh, God. <laughs> Caldwell County investigator D.A. Brown told the Washington Post that if the body had been buried in the woodlands behind the trailer, quote, we would have never found her. Oh, way to go, guy. That same day, police arrested Bobby at his workplace. According to Capital News Service, the Lapati case was the first time a police unit captured a murder suspect based primarily on evidence obtained from email messages. Very interesting. And what I would like to say real quick, while we are laughing about this murder, <laughs> okay, this woman said she wanted to be killed, said she wanted to be had sex with, and then murdered. Okay. Usually I'm not one to joke and laugh about sex crimes necessarily. Sometimes I do. This is one of those instances where I do need to make clarification that I don't think it's funny that she died, but this woman may have died getting exactly what she wanted. And death and suicide is never funny, but that's why you guys tune in here, so we can kind of make it a little easier to swallow for you. Speaking of uh, making it easy to swallow, I saw a guy swallow three hot dogs on YouTube earlier, whole, without gagging. Good for him. Trying to get him on the show. Ladies, take notes. (laughs) Ladies. (laughs) Gentlemen, take notes. (laughs) Everybody, take notes. So while in custody, Bobby was interviewed about the events surrounding the alleged murder of Sharon. (laughs) He told investigators that for several days, he and Sharon had acted out their violent sexual fantasies in his trailer. Because what more of an appealing place to fuck than that dirty-ass trailer? Shut her old slow hand. I did. I dicked her down for about twenty-five seconds. I let her shit in the box with the cat litter. 
She liked that a lot. I let her poop in a box of Captain Crunch. <laughs> I ate it and I fed it to her with my. <laughs> That's stupid. We gotta so, go. We gotta move on. Okay. So he confessed that Sharon had willingly allowed him to tie her up with the rope and probe her with objects around the house. <laughs> Take my bowling trophy up your asshole, baby. <laughs> hey, send that, that can of Glade. <laughs> Give me that apple cinnamon Glade. Oh, God. Here we go under your butt. So Bobby also admitted that Sharon allowed him to tie a rope around her neck and tighten it as she climaxed okay. during intercourse. So At least he got her there. Exactly. Good for him. I'm sure that fucking G-spot was hard as fuck to hit. So Bobby claimed... It looked like a fist. <laughs> He was so angry. I know you may think that that's a fist, but that's my G spot. <laughs> so Bobby claimed to have accidentally strangled Sharon to death while in the throes of violent sexual play, according to his lawyer, Neil Beach. Now, Bobby was later quoted as saying, I don't know how much I pulled the rope. I never wanted to kill her, but she ended up dead. <laughs> to Bobby's credit, she was husky. She was big. He probably didn't know. I mean, that was a lot of fat to get through. To- Price, I, gotta, I don't know how much I got to go squeezing on this rope to get her to start seeing yeah. stars and I'll kill her ass. Yeah, I mean, it's it's one of those things. It's like, it's safer to use horse tranquilizers in a, some, right. uh, situation like this. True. Yeah, put them down for a couple days, maybe. <laughs> Not necessarily trying to you kill them. You don't have to worry about killing them. Yeah. They may think that they're going out for good, but yeah. they wake up. I don't know. Refreshed, he, rejuvenated. That rope was probably the size of a hula hoop to get around her fucking neck. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Whew. I don't know, man. I don't know either, man. Where are, you, where are we at here? Your part, my, my buddy. Oh, okay. My dude. <laughs> okay, sorry. The uh, the non yellow part. And this is a this is not a joke here. The body of Sharon Lepotka was sent to Doctor John Butts. Butts. To <laughs> <laughs> the Doctor Butts. Doctor Butts. Oh, God, he I'm... was North Carolina's chief medical examiner. Of course he was. The autopsy report stated that the cause of death as strangulation. Of Other course. tests showed some inconclusive evidence of sexual torture or mutilation. <laughs> oh gosh. He said he he said he tortured or he said he did like put stuff in her, but they couldn't find any evidence of that. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Okay. okay. Butts believe that Sharon died three days after she arrived in North Carolina. In an interview with the Associated Press on November 1st of 1996, Neil Beach said that the autopsy report supported his client's claim that the death was accidental. It is, quote, it is hard for me to believe the woman was tortured for three days if the medical examiner of North Carolina couldn't find any indication of that true. It's much easier to understand or picture an accident occurring during sexual activity than it is to conjure up an image of this man as a cold-blooded, premeditated killer. Search warrant affidavits released by the police stated that Sharon intended to meet Bobby specifically to be tortured and killed. Okay. Captain Danny Barlow considered a death under such circumstances to be deliberate, not accidental. Okay. According to police, the emails written under the pseudonym Slowhand detailing how he was going to kill Sharon provided further evidence that the death was indeed premeditated. Ugh. She walked right into this one. Right. Bobby was charged with first degree murder oh, and man. held without bond in the Caldwell County Jail on October 26th. Superior Court Judge Beverly T. Beal issued a gag order to those <laughs> no directly <pun> intended. <laughs> involved in the case. Okay, we got to stop right here and hook up with these hysteria guys. So we will be right back. Cool. Immediately. All right, we're back from Hysteria 51. Good times. It's going to be released a week. A week from, from today. So a week from today. What's that? The, uh, like the 10th, 11th? 10th or 11th. 10th or 11th. Uh, yeah, the 11th, it'll be, it should be out. So okay. check out Hysteria 51 on the 11th. If you want to listen to some of us talking about the Doomsday Clock. It's a good time. It is. It's a, we, had a, we had a really good time talking with them. Right, back to our shit here. Sure. Uh, regardless of the court order, the media obtained enough information to sensationalize the Lapotka case. Most of the news stories focused on the dangers of internet uh, mediated meetings. Sharon's death spawned debates and discussion groups worldwide. Many called for censorship of the Internet to prevent such death and to protect children or like little fat boys from being picked up at truck stops and gas stations. Conversely, anti-censorship activists argued that the Internet was a useful tool allowing people to masturbate to porn. Uh, sorry, allowing Thank people God. to express themselves more freely and to voice their ideas, thoughts and views in an open forum. Uh, right. Often anonymously, yeah. Sharon's death and the pub and the publicity surrounding the publicity. I sound Ooh. like I get kicked in the fucking Sorry, face man. by a stroke. We've been at this for like a couple hours now. It's okay. 
Uh, publicity surrounding the case led to an increased interest in understanding deviant sexual behaviors, especially sadism, masochism, and the use of asphyxia during sexual intercourse. Psychologist Richard, uh, Richard von Croft Ebbing first coined the term sadist and masochist to descri- describe behavior in which sexual arousal was achieved through the infliction or reception of pain. Why don't you take him through this stuff real quick, Ryan? Sure. And one, and one thing I, I do want to talk about, which which I kind of addressed with, with Nick off air here a little bit before this, um, before we did our other episode here, is that it kind of makes you wonder that if, you know, if this is something that she wanted off of the bat, you know, if it should have been treated lesser, yeah, I, I know you said that. I said, say it on the fucking show so we can talk about it. I right. think that all of the all of the evidence showed that she wanted to be sexually tortured and she wanted to be killed. And then Rob said, what about those people that get taken off of life support? What's the right. difference between... And then I, I've watched that documentary on HBO or whatever about um, planned suicide. Yeah, uh, and, I mean, and if, if it's your will, if it's your wish to go, I mean, granted, obviously, you know, you still killed somebody. Yeah. But, I mean, could it be technically considered manslaughter as opposed to murder? the ball falls in the court of it's up to one person whether they want to take their own life. Right. You cannot, as a person, take another person's life unless, it, if... If they want you to or not, regardless. Right. But the uh, the assisted suicide stuff is a different debate for a different time. Whole another can of worms. It'd be a good there. episode for us, though. It definitely would. So let's go into the next part here, where it says um, a controversial form of deviant sexual play practice by some sadomasochists involved the use of strangulation. Sexual strangulation is referred to by the psychological community as a form of as- asphyxiophilia. Okay. I like that. That sounds kind of hot. <laughs> Asphyxiophilia refers to the general practice of controlling or restricting oxygen to the brain by interfering with the breath directly or through pressure on the carotid arteries in order to achieve sexual gratification. Often, the hands or a tourniquet of some sort is tied around the throat during sexual intercourse or masturbation. That's dangerous. That is very dangerous. That's jerking off with fire right there. <laughs> it really is. To achieve a feeling of euphoria and elation, which accompanies a lack of oxygen to the brain, supposedly this can increase the intensity of an orgasm. I would never want to know what that feels like. <laughs> I. <laughs> That's what sometimes when I jerk off, I got to give myself a pat on the back because it was so good. Yeah. And I was afraid that one of those times that I did it so good. It was the time I was choking myself, and I just lost all control. And I can imagine. There is no doubt in my mind that if I was part of a crime scene, I would shit myself. And that would be very... <laughs> I wouldn't be ashamed to be naked. I would just be ashamed that I pooped my pants. Because yeah. I know it smelled really bad. I mean, I, I know how good creaming feels. <laughs> I don't want to know... I don't even want to imagine... I don't want to step that up, you know, like fucking choking myself. Like, even if it's times two. Yeah. I, That's I'm, too much power. If some, no, of, no. some of you guys don't know this, but there's a little nugget inside your butt, <laughs> and you can s- stick stuff in there and put pressure on it. Yeah, and it's better than choking yourself. It's like giving yourself a whole nother life. Yeah, you try it sometime. It's called the pleasure button. It's called the pleasure button. <laughs> we call it the pleasure nug here at Ohio <laughs> Podcast. Yeah, we do. The charge was eventually reduced to vol- uh, voluntary manslaughter. There we go. The case against Bobby Glass stretched on for three years, following several lengthy delays. On January 27, 2000, Bobby pleaded guilty to voluntary manslaughter as well as six counts of, don't forget that he is a fucking child molester. Yeah. Well, uh, he was into the child pornography. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Second degree sexual exploitation of a minor. The latter charges resulted from the pornographic material found on Bobby's computer. And if you ask me, that's fucking way worse. Yeah, kill him for that. Fuck yeah, him. Exactly. Bobby was sentenced to 36 to 53 months in prison for the manslaughter of Sharon Lapotka and 20. One to 26 months for the possession of ch- uh, child pornography. He was sent to Avery Mitchell Correctional Institution in North Carolina on February 20th, 2002. Two weeks before his release, Bobby Glass had a heart attack. He was pronounced dead at 1.30 a.m. at Spruce Pine Community Hospital in North Carolina. 
burn in fucking hell, you Ooh. fat, sloppy piece of <laughs> stinky <laughs> shit. Yeah. Well, so that that's consensual murder for you right there. There you go. It's kind of silly, kind of crazy. Wrapped up in a nice little package and a pretty oh, bow. Real hot in the package. Sexy. Couple things real quick. I, sure. I, I got a joke for you. Okay. I've been working on these jokes, Rob. Lay it on me, Daddy. There's four nuns. They're in an accident. They all die. Okay. They go to heaven. They're at the pearly gates. Right. St. Peter's there at the pearly gates. He sees these nuns in a single file line, and the first nun walks up, and he says to get through the gates... Are there any parts of your body that's ever touched a penis? And the first nun, she holds up the tip of her finger. She said, I touched a penis with the tip of my finger. He says, okay, dip the tip of your finger in this holy water and you can get in. Mm -hmm. She dips her finger in the holy water. He lets her in. Good lady. The second nun walks up. She holds up her hand. She says, "I this hand has touched a penis. And uh, St. Petey says, put your hand in the water, the holy water, and I'll let you in. She dips her hand in the same holy water. Mm Mm-hmm. And uh, she gets through the gate. Then the fourth nun, she cuts in line. She goes to the front. She says, wait, wait, wait just a second. I got to get, fr- get in front of her because there's no way I'm gurgling my mouth out after she puts that stuff in her ass. <laughs> <laughs> it was bad, isn't it? It was bad. It's so bad. Oh, man. <laughs> so bad. If you like jokes, that's good for you. There's nothing. <laughs> there's nothing. There's nothing more to that. There's no follow up. Thanks for liking jokes. <laughs> um, God, there was something else that I needed to put out there, but I don't recall what it was. Huh. Every live show we have forever is canceled because everyone's dying from COVID nineteen, and it is fucking killing me. I was thinking about this the other day yeah. that I want to do another live show so bad. No, yeah. not soon. There's nothing. There's nothing cooler than meeting everybody and yeah. talking and hanging out and just having a fun night. Mm. <clears throat> fucking COVID. Yes. I can't wait. Once once we have something set up, we'll let you guys know. Sure. Once the country opens back up and we can yeah. trust you dirty fuckers to <laughs> dirty fuckers <laughs> to come to our shows and not give us a fucking disease. So go check out um Hysteria 51 next week. Yeah, the 11th. It's going to be the Doomsday Clock episode. That'll be a lot of fun between We're going to have them on the show soon and we're going to talk yep. about some stuff. And then uh Rob, t- tell them what you oh and another thing uh-huh. if you go to Zedge the app Z E D G E on Android the Zedge app for uh-huh. ringtones and you look up Brohio our theme song is oh, actually yeah. on uh, Zedge you can nice. put our ringtone as your text tone or as your ringtone that's a that's a labor labor of love for me it is a very deep deep labor of love everyone always asks like who did your theme song like this fucking guy over here yeah this piece of shit right here that couldn't fucking ever make it into an actual song (laughs) so he used it into a fucking intro for a podcast so tell them even better news guess what guys i just wanted to let you know i fucking love you 